If the international phonetic alphabet has symbols and sounds you haven't mastered yet, it's time for IPA and IPAs with Molly. Hi everybody, welcome to IPA and IPAs, the unfussy show about the international phonetic alphabet and beer. I'm Molly from Molly Does Dialects, and tonight we have a video about the difference between uh as in strut and uh as in comma. Somebody asked this question in a YouTube comment, and I thought it was a great question, and I thought, well, let's make a video about it. So just a quick reminder, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I want to hear them. But first, what are we drinking? Tonight, I am having an Elysian Space Dust IPA from Elysian Brewing Company in Seattle, Washington. Now, this beer was a suggestion on my Instagram. So if you have Instagram and you want to follow me, I'm at Molly Does Dialects. Um, but I asked about IPAs I should, should try, and somebody suggested the Elysian Space Dust, so I'm very excited to try it. I finally got my hands on one. Um, I don't think they're that hard to find, but my beer store didn't have them. Okay, it's very yellow. It's a very um, bright yellow color, a little bit hazy. Let me see, it smells very citrusy. It also smells strong, more strong than some other ones. So cheers everybody, let's see what it tastes like. Ooh, oh, okay. Very citrusy on the front, very bitter on the end. I didn't check the alcohol by volume of this one, but it feels like it's a heavy beer. Um, it just tastes strong. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, <laughs> yes, it's 8.2 alcohol by volume, so it is, it's a strong beer. It is a little too bitter for my tastes, but the front of it is um, almost like lemon grapefruity. It's not orangey to me. Hmm. It's very interesting. Um, if you are an IPA person, I encourage you to try this one. If not, this is probably one you should skip. Good to try new things. So, on to the difference between a uh, as in strut and a uh, as in comma. Now, in a lot of American accents, these sounds are pretty much the same. Um, I'm from the American Midwest and they're exactly the same in my accent. Um, the big difference, and this is how I learned it, was that uh, as in strut, goes in the stressed syllable, and uh, as in comma, goes in the unstressed syllable. And some people also talk about this as uh, as in strut, is a full vowel, and uh, as in comma, is a reduced vowel. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about all of that tonight, but first, I want to talk a little bit about how I notate the uh as in strut vowel. Um, because when I, when I transcribe, I don't tend to draw it like this because my, my accent of English, my American accent, they're pretty much the same. I tend to say that the uh as in strut gets advanced in the mouth, so it's moving this way towards the middle, kind of towards schwa. So I tend to say uh as in strut with the advanced diacritic, meaning it moves forward on the vowel quadrilateral. All right, so I had mentioned that uh as in strut, always in the stressed syllable, and uh as in comma, always in the unstressed syllable. So I gave us two words to start practicing with the transcription. The first is money. So two syllables, right? Money. Which one's the stressed syllable? Money. Money. It's the first one. So we're going to transcribe that with the strut. So 
I would say stress mark. Mm. Uh, advanced. M. Syllable break. N knee. And our bracket. Money. Money. Strut. Stressed syllable. All right, let's try the next one. The next word is sofa. Sofa, also two syllables. Which one's stressed? Sofa, sofa. It's the first. And so the uh sound is in the second syllable. So this is an opportunity for us to use the schwa. So it looks like this. Again, our stress mark, because the first syllable stressed, right? Our s, o, the o diphthong. So we've got o, syllable break, so, F, A, uh, schwa. Sofa. So we have money and sofa. Strut and comma. How'd you do? I bet you did very well. All right. So we have three more words to transcribe for us to practice which one we're going to use, strut or comma. And remember, for our purpose, they're pretty much the same sound. Just one goes in the stressed syllable and one goes in the unstressed syllable. So let's try the first one. Cut. Now cut is a one syllable word. And in a one syllable word, there's only one syllable to stress. So we're going to use strut. So it might look like this. Uh, and remember, I advanced that. T. Cut. Me, personally, I would tend to put a no audible release on it because I tend to say cut instead of cut. So that's how I'm going to transcribe it today. Oh, that's a messy bracket. There we go. How'd you do? Woo! Awesome. Nice job. All right, next word. Suppose. Two syllables. Suppose. 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 Pose is the stressed syllable. So the uh sound is over here, uh, su, so it's going to be a schwa. Let's try it together. S, uh, stress mark, su, p, o, got the o diphthong, suppose, z, suppose, now, if suppose was the end of the sentence, the end of the thought, I would tend to devoice that z. That's my tendency. It's a lot of tendencies of people in America. Suppose. I'm going to put my bracket on it. Now, something I want to draw attention to is that in the word suppose and the word sofa, those are the two words we've used schwa in so far. And suppose the schwa is standing in, if you're looking at letters, for the U. And in sofa, the schwa is standing in for the letter A. This is just a reminder that American spelling is not phonetic. English spelling, nope, not phonetic at all. Um, which is why schwa can be a really difficult concept um, for non-native English speakers. Just something to keep in mind. Um, think about the word refrigerator. We say er, but there's an O-R at the end. That kind of stuff is really, really complicated to learn. So if English is your second language, cheers to you. That's really hard. Congratulations. 
All right, last word, and this one is extra fun. The word is above. Two syllables, above, above, above. Second syllable stress, but both syllables have the uh sound. I'm so excited. Let's do it. So we have our bracket above. So our first syllable is just a schwa. Uh, stress mark. B. A. Uh, schwa. No, not schwa. Strut. Advanced strut. Above. V. Above. How did you do? I bet you did great. And there you have it. That is the difference between a uh, as in strut and a uh, as in comma. For most people's purposes, if you're learning, if you're trying to learn American English, think of them as the same sound, just which one's in the stressed syllable and which one's not. Other than that, they're really not different in American English. They are different in um, some accents of British English, but that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me tonight on this episode of IPA and IPAs. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments below, what are you drinking? What should I be drinking? I do try to follow suggestions when I get them, like this one. What would you like me to talk about? Again, I do follow suggestions when I get them, um, if I can. And I would love to know what you would like to learn about to see if I can help in any way. Have a wonderful week. Until next time, cheers, everybody. You can never fail with a fresh pale ale and Molly. I'm Molly from my...